The dumbest people who give musicians advice on these platforms will tell you The music video is dead. But a funny thing, these scammers just talk in an endless circle of plagiarizing each other, so what they're saying is often total bull. But the real reality is that the major labels, big indies, and many of the top DIY artists blowing up right now are all doing more music videos. But there's an interesting detail to what they're doing with these videos, in that they're not working harder to do more, they're working smarter. Give me a minute and I'll explain. But hold up for one second. Did you know that any fan, weirdo, stalker, or hater can find tons of your private information by simply searching on Google? Yeah, that's scary. Which is why I'm excited to have one rep sponsor this video. They're a fully automated privacy service that removes your profiles from more than 195 people search sites and Google. You see, data brokers, also known as people search sites like White Pages, My Life, Spokio, Been Verified, and tons of others, gather individuals' sensitive personal details from public records and then sell it to whoever has some money. And they can find these sites easily by typing in your name on Google. And I know some of you have some really crazy fans and want to maintain privacy for you and your loved ones. You hear constantly about musicians getting their Google Drive of demos hacked after some stalker figures out their cat's name and mom's birthday and then guesses their password correctly. I've even had people show up to my place unexpectedly when my address was still online, which is why I used OneRep to get my sensitive information removed. These data brokers often mix up people with criminal records. Trust me, I know as it's happened to me since Jesse Cannons get arrested for a lot of weird things. This can lead to fake news reports when you are famous and tons of other things to damage your reputation. Cyber criminals can even use your information to steal your identity, take over your accounts, file fraudulent tax returns, or apply for new credit Use cards, bank accounts, or loans. The or they'll hack your social media accounts you worked hard to build. This Use is why OneRep can really be a Use huge help for musicians, as it can help now. you sleep well at night knowing you are less susceptible to all Use these terrible things. Sign up with OneRep on right now and get 50% off an annual subscription for you or your family. OneRep is backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, and you even have a trial period to see how it works and experience all of the benefits. Use my link in the description or on the screen now. But as I was saying, so every week on my members only video feed, I go in and dissect how artists are going from a few fans to millions. And yes, you can join it for a measly $5 a month to get access to five new hours of dissections every month about how you can blow up your music, including our humongous back catalog where I probably broke down how an artist like you blows up. So hit the description for a link. But my point before I was trying to pay the bills is I see something in most of the artists I'm dissecting. Nearly every artist is doing the same thing. They make a very simple video for their song rather than the crazy big budget viral attempts of recent years. But why? What? I got this. Great. So what are the behaviors that has changed as short form videos and retention minded edits like Mr. Beast videos has milted our collective attention spans we forget that this does include music videos. But now that short form videos are offering the sample size bites of song hooks that get us interested in hearing more of the song, one of the things so many people seem to forget is that not everyone is running to Spotify to listen to a song, but instead it's often YouTube since that's free to everyone. And when listeners go to YouTube, they are used to being entertained with the video that at least maintains some attention for them. But as we know, videos are often expensive. And if you follow my release strategies, since I advise putting out your music video halfway through your song's promotion cycle, that's a whole month of not having a video that could help convert fans over to listening to your full song and getting the full experience, which then makes them want to listen to it repeatedly. Especially those fans whose brains are melted and need some sort of motion in a video to stick around while they listen to it. So in walks what I am calling a MVV or minimum viable video, which I stole from the term minimum viable product, which you know, you'll hear tech pros talk Talking about. It basically means that it's the least amount of a product you have to build out in order to release it. So like you'll notice a lot of apps launch in the beginning with not all the features that they have a year from now. That's a minimum viable product in the beginning. So these minimum viable videos are low effort videos often called visualizers, which let's be honest, that term has lost all meaning at this point. But what it really is just saying is, hey, this isn't the music video or the official music video. I may make a better one one day. It's just something I put together with some to keep you and your rotted attention span watching. And you want to make these visuals
visualizers or MVVs fast and keep it minimum since clearly the effort is not what's rewarded. It's just keeping people interested and aligning with the emotion of the song and that seems to be a formula for getting millions upon millions of views for so many artists, as you'll see in a minute. And this is important since if your potential fan heads to YouTube to hear your song, their tweaking brain from scrolling TikTok or Reels now has something to gravitate towards without having to spend a ton of money on or take a lot of time. But many of you are probably thinking, great Jesse, why don't you show me instead of tell me? Here we have Dasha, who we dissected on the member feed, who has one of the hugest viral songs in country of recent years, Austin. Her initial video is a few takes of her performing on a stage, filmed on a cheap camera, but honestly could have been done on an iPhone. Then it got a few cuts and a camera filter effect put on top, which could have been done in CapCut for free, or by buying some film effect pack for $25 online, and there's the video, and it sure has a lot of views. Then we have Shibuzi, whose song Tipsy hit number four on the Billboard charts, and the video is literally a single take. I mean, he may have done more than one take, but this appears to be using one take of him in front of a green screen, and then they separately film some people singing along to the song in front of a bar. And there's a really good psychological trick there, since showing a bunch of cliche looking country music enjoying people, loving a guy who looks like Shibuzi, who doesn't look like most of country music, and enjoying his song is super smart psychology to say, look, it's okay to love this song. It's a great song, especially in a genre that could be, well, I'll put it as nicely as I can, closed-minded, but really, I don't wanna put it that nicely, but I'm trying not to be so messy this time. Okay. Anyway, you could make a video like this in hours for very little money, since it just needs an iPhone, some lighting, and a few takes. But the crown for the king of the minimum viable video has to go to Bill Murray, an artist I am a huge fan of, who often makes videos walking his dog or mowing his lawn. Feels like the emotion of the song because he's found a vibe to his content that really works and it's authentic to him and his audience responds to it by ringing up the numbers of video views on these videos he's filming super easily. Speaking of that, here's the indie rock group we dissected on the members feed, Dury, who simply did a few takes on a slide that goes right along with the band's playful spirit. And like so much of marketing today, this is aligning with either the emotion of the song or the artist's vibe. And then you have solid gold that fans consume. For example, Fuckers, who are about to be one of the biggest bands in the world, wrote the summer jam Bon Bon, and it has a simple green screen with stock footage from a roller coaster, but it fits this perfectly. Or you have Tommy Richmond, who we also dissected on the members feed, and in his video for his number two billboard charting song, Million Dollar Baby, it just has the lyrics on the screen, some simple glitches, and footage that was shot on an iPhone at a party. And it's perfect alignment. Since it's a little hard to make out what Tommy says in the song, the lyrics give you a clue, and it shows the type of party that should be playing the song. I know so many of you think you need hair lights and all this crazy stuff to make a video, but honestly, so many groups in so many genres are doing this because you actually don't need all that. If the song blows up, do what Dasha did when Austin blew up and make a video a few months later that has a bigger budget and shows the dance to the song that she made go viral on TikTok and push that to reignite interest in it. But the smarter ones of you are saying, okay, Jesse, you said we should make these fast and keep it minimal since Clearly the effort is not what matters, it's just keeping people interested, so how much effort is too much? Man, you're smart. So I made you a formula for how I would do this, and it's a six hour formula. Take one hour, maybe two, to think about the emotion of the song and brainstorm it with whoever you're working with and think about what would align with your image or the emotion of that song and what would be a simple thing to film around it. Now, take two hours to film it, tops. Try takes and make sure you're overperforming the song by 10% more than you think you should because let's be honest, we have to go off a little bit to make this interesting and keep some motion going. Then take three more hours to edit it. Experiment with filters. Should you put the lyrics on the screen? If so, play with different fonts. Then upload it and schedule it to YouTube and don't think about it again till it's time to push it out since honestly, you have more important things to worry about and this is simply a minimum viable video to make sure people's attention spans stick around and and listen to your song. Don't treat it like your biggest artistic work. But I know the even smarter ones you probably picked up that I'm going to be shifting my release strategy to putting this version of the video out the day you release your song and even chopping it up into short form. God, you guys are so smart. You're the best. And I'll have a video on that 
after I do a little bit more experimenting and considering that part of it. So here's the thing, while you just learned this, if you really wanna grow your fan base, you need to understand the five types of music videos that actually get views and can help you generate ideas for this. And that video is on the screen right now. Isn't that nice? So make sure you watch that next if you really wanna level up. Thanks for watching.